no an academic weapon. You can't even say my academic chopstick. Like, I'm an academic butter knife on a good day. Your 20s are a confusing time. Your 20s. Your 20s. 20s. Yeah, your 20s. Their 20s. My 20s. And their 20s. Our 20s. In my 20s. 20. 20 year old self. Oh, to be 21. And I'm sure you're wondering how we got to this point. Crying on the internet is a pretty low low. And to be honest, it's all to do with my university admin. But let me explain. So I didn't enjoy medical school for the first three years at all. And most people have this experience because they had false assumptions. They had all these hopes and dreams of the white coat and the stethoscope and saving lives just like in the shows that they watch. I never had that. I grew up whilst my mother was doing her surgical training and most of my relatives are in medicine. A lot of my family didn't actually want me to go into medicine and sometimes I wonder what I would have been if I had taken their advice. I'm a surgeon. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it, I'm a surgeon. Mm, you see that velvet? Yeah, yeah. Look at this. I'm super excited for that. I thought I got my bits and bobs. I'm a surgeon. With that said. I've got a full academic rejections in 24 hours. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. But it's just like, I don't know why I try so hard. And it's just so painful because it's like the one thing that I was like, I'm good at is academics. And you know what? I'm actually not good at it. <laughs> so it's a case of, I'm actually not good at anything. And it's a case of, what's the point? I'm just like, I have all these plans, I have all these roles, I try so hard, and nothing seems to be working out. Here's the thing even before I came to medical school, I was on the brink of burnout. I did a lot in my final two years of high school. I set up the dental and medical society and I had guest speakers coming and I had resources ready for them. I had a podcast on science and medicine with my friends. I was writing for the school's newsletter. I was doing science and engineering fairs. I was an overachiever, constantly busy, rushing, rushing, rushing and filling up her time to avoid facing the real issues that I had. And then when medical school came, it hit me like a full truck of bricks. The sleepless nights, the long days, the constant lectures. So many people say that medical school feels like trying to drink water out of a fire hydrant and they are absolutely correct because it's drowning, it's overwhelming and it's on top of you, a constant pressure. Academic burnout isn't just feeling tired. It's a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by prolonged stress. The stress had been building up for all these years and the issues with my university's admin just made it worse every single day. So what happened is that I started resenting academia. I started hating it and despising it. And then I started hating and despising myself. I had spent my entire childhood aiming for a life in academia. From about age eight, I had decided I wanted to study medicine in a specific academic institution and just to be an academic. And then one day I woke up and I was 18 and I just hated every single thing about academia. Don't get me wrong, I'm still a nerd. I still have my HIV and herpes obsession. I have my STD teddy bear and I will watch all the documentaries on the most random parts of medicine. But I know there is no way that I can pursue a career in this field. 
and I crucified myself for this. I beat myself up because I should have known better, I should do better, I should be better. And I no longer had a North Star, I no longer had a compass. What am I aiming for? What am I working towards? I'm having all these failures in exams and in coursework and I can't even make any friends in this place and I'm not in any academic societies and I have this crippling anhedonia. I have no drive or motivation to do anything ever for any reason and I just can't stand it. And maybe you're not in medical school, maybe you're studying engineering or law or something completely different. And maybe you feel this way too, you started to feel burnout. The naps aren't helping because you're not actually tired. You don't need sleep, you need rest. You need a break. I want to let you know that someone else feels the same. That someone else is a random 21 year old Nigerian studying medicine in London. But I promise you if you start to take things slower, if you give yourself breaks, if you rest, if you take yourself to a really cute cafe and have a really yummy, healthy breakfast before going to get your hair done on a random Tuesday, or maybe not that exactly, the things will start to get better. First of all, you need to forgive yourself. You don't have to want the things that you wanted when you were younger. It's okay to change. Second of all, you need to evaluate if you should be in that academic space to begin with. I realized medical school is for me because it's my first love and it's my biggest passion and it's everything and more to me. But a career in academia isn't where I should be and it isn't what I should be doing. We can talk more in the comments about burnout and life after burnout and finding an identity that is separate from your degree and separate from your academics. And I guess being a high achiever, it's what we're used to. It's a label that we internalize and hold on to so much, but we shouldn't and we don't have to. We can find interests and joy in other things in other places. And maybe it's the weight of the alum or the weight of the family you come from or the things that came before you. But I promise you there will come a day where you'll be okay with just studying things for fun, just learning because you want to learn. And it might be nothing to do with your exams, nothing to do with your degree and nothing to do with your speciality. I'm gonna enjoy spending hours looking into art history just because I can. And I urge you to do the same too. At the end of the day, it's okay to change paths, redefine your dreams, because your mental health matters. You just need to take your time. You can keep going slowly and people can go past you, but so long as you're on the right path at the right time, that's all that matters. You might have to go and look for a different book. It might take you longer, but when you find that book, go into a super cozy room and enjoy reading it there. Oh, my God, we're not going to